Welcome to the Building Materials Sales and Marketing Podcast, presented by Mark Mitchell, a sales and marketing consultant who specializes in helping building materials companies overcome difficult sales problems. Mark is the author of the book, Building Materials Channel Marketing, and a frequent speaker at industry events. Hello, this is Mark Mitchell. Today, I'd like to talk to you about if you have a competitor who is a publicly traded company, that you have some real advantages. Publicly traded companies many times are very large, which can make them seem formidable. They also could be a large company in which their building materials business is actually a very small part of their business, which presents another set of problems for them and advantages for you. But we'll talk about that another day. Today, I'd like to talk about challenges that publicly traded building material companies face and how if you are privately owned, the advantages that you have that they don't have. I was reminded of this when I recently read a stock analyst report of a very large publicly traded building materials company who shall remain (laughs) anonymous. And so I'm going to, for this purposes, just call them Big Building Materials Company or BBMC, which sounds impressive. So let me me read you what the uh, stock analyst wrote. Shares of Big Building Material Company, BBMC, dropped as much as 15% today after the company announced second quarter earnings. This manufacturer of exterior building materials used in the commercial and residential construction markets delivered a relatively solid performance compared to the year-ago period with revenue up 12% and net income up 24%. Despite strong year-over-year growth, quarterly earnings per share of $1.19 fell well below Wall Street's expectation of $1.55. According to data compiled by Yahoo Finance, as of 1.43 Eastern Daylight Time, the stock had settled at a 10.3% loss. Shares have now lost 35% of their value since the beginning of the year. So now what? Shares of BBMC just can't catch a break from Wall Street lately. While management admits the business is facing higher material costs, the expectations is for business to pick up momentum in the second half of 2018 and carry that forward into next year. In fact, the company could capture up to 72% of all earnings before income taxes for the year in the back half of this year, when building material markets peak. Simply put, instead of panicking with the rest of the market, investors might consider giving this building stock a closer look. But BBMC is not on our top buy list, but these 10 stocks are. Investing geniuses David and Bill Smith just released their best stocks to buy now, and it could pay to listen, especially when you consider their average stock pick is up 353% versus a mere 81% for the S&P 500. They just shared what they think are the 10 best stocks for investors to buy right now, and BBMC wasn't one of them. That's right, these 10 stocks are even better buys, period. Now, imagine that you are the CEO of BBMC, this large publicly traded building materials company And you just read that analyst report. And if that analyst wrote a report, there's probably at least 12 more that are very much like that based on the results. So the CEO, what I find of this company, is focused on Wall Street. In one regard, he has to be, but he's focused on Wall Street a lot more than he is on the customers. So right there is an opportunity for you as a non-publicly traded company to focus on the customers more than your publicly traded competitors do because their top leadership is not focused on the customers. They are focused on Wall Street, which means shorter term expectations, and they have specific number targets they know they need to meet 
and they're focused on meeting those, I will literally say, however they can, which frequently, unfortunately, or fortunately for you, frequently involves finding ways to reduce costs and improve efficiency, reduce waste. But many of these changes are at the expense of the customer. They certainly are uh, some of the first people to value engineer quality out of a product in which they will constantly be looking at the products, looking how they're made, looking at their source of supply, looking for ways to lower their costs. And that's certainly wise business. But when you start to take quality out of the product, because no one will really notice if you just reduce the performance or the uh, its service length or installation ability, whatever it is, just a little bit, no one will notice. But over time, every one of those little changes, all of a sudden you wake up and recognize this product is very different than it was five years ago. You as a non-publicly traded or privately held company it's easier for you to hold the line on product quality. We're going to find ways to reduce costs and optimize production and so forth, but we're not going to let go of product quality simply to lower our costs, period. The second part of this is the is I find that the leaders of most publicly traded building material companies tend to be financially oriented people. They have to be. Dealing with Wall Street and, and understanding all of that is a, is a whole different world than, than certainly uh, just simple building materials. And so because of that, I find that financial people tend to simplify things because they look at it the way they do things. So they tend to be very practical people, very prudent people, very risk-averse people. And so what that means is their vision is that they're not really as in control of their own destiny as their privately held competitors can view themselves. So a person who's very, very strong financially will simply think that they can increase their sales by lowering their price. They can improve their profit by cutting costs or raising their price. They tend to see things really that simply. They don't understand that people buy things for other reasons, that customers will actually pay more for a product because they can't see where they would pay more. So why would another customer? So they tend to value or assume that price is more important than it really is. Because when they buy a car, I'm sure that they work really hard to make sure they're getting the best deal. So they assume everybody else thinks that way. And in today's world, more and more of your customers are not looking for the lowest price. They're looking for a competitive price, but they're looking to deal with a company that will make them more successful. This tends to not be on the radar screen of how a strong financial leader of a publicly held building material company will think, period. The next area is that they tend to be naturally risk averse. So they're not going to try anything. They're going to keep doing what they have done in the past and continue to try to do it better, more effectively, and at a lower cost. They're not really receptive to doing things new ways or trying things that are unproven. The next part of being risk averse is you can see that there tends to be an over control of everything. Their number one concern is what do the investors think of the company, not what do the customers think of the company. And so because of this, you will see areas like, for example, social media where they tend to be either totally ineffective at social media because they can't let go enough to have social media managed correctly. So they usually totally miss that opportunity. You, as a privately held company who is reporting to 
an owner and uh, you can now be more focused on the customer and you can do things like be active on social media at the risk of occasionally saying something that somebody wish you didn't say and which you simply take it down. I rarely find that that happens, but I find very large publicly traded building material companies will tend to have the worst use of social media. And I'm just using this as an example of their need to control. They're fearful that some person in marketing will say something on Twitter or Facebook or LinkedIn or Howes or wherever they are that will somehow cause some controversy. And of course, it becomes a nightmare that it's going to become viral and they'll be the laughing stock on CNN or something. And that's really not going to happen. But that's how they they see, well, we don't have to do that. So let's not do it. There, There is a bit of risk there. So they don't do it. So there's an opportunity, for example, in terms of a social media presence where privately held companies can run circles around most publicly traded companies. The second area you will find is quite frequently that when you look at the websites of these companies, when you go to the homepage, you can see that the website is designed to appeal to and meet the needs of the investor more than the customer. The website can be controlled perhaps by the public relations people or investor relations people who have control over what's on the website and how it works. And they're measured by, are the investors happy with the website more than are the customers? So it can be very hard for those companies to make their websites or online presence as effective as it could be. It can be hard to introduce a new product. It can be hard to change even the content. And sometimes it is extremely hard to even find the product because it's buried somewhere in the website. It isn't right up front and easy to find. As, once again, a privately held company, you don't have that restriction. So you should be taking full advantage of that to see what you can do to outpace them. They may have bigger dollars and be able to outspend you, but you can more easily outthink and outflank them because of their need for control and their aversion to risk or aversion to the unknown or to trying things. Publicly traded companies will also tend to not allow for failure. Failure is almost is like literally not permitted. So as the marketing people are trying to think of innovative new ways to more effectively grow the sales of their product, they have to evaluate every recommendation in terms of how certain it is to succeed. So they will stay stuck in what has worked in the past. So every year we go to the builder show, the architect show, and there's no risk. Even if it is a total waste of money, there's no risk in that. We just keep doing what we do. If a marketing person was to propose that they start a marketing automation program, put calls to action on the website, did something in social media, something with content marketing, or some other, I'll call it creative uh, tactic, and if in any way it failed, you know, they could you know, really have a problem with their career. It's not a good thing. So don't even try is the message. You as a privately held company, you don't have that restriction. If you change the headline on your homepage and it doesn't perform as what was there, you go back to the old one or try another one. It's no big deal. Large publicly traded companies do not have that freedom. Everything they do has to be a winner. And so it's that old adage of they tend to play not to lose more than to win. So there's another opportunity uh, for a privately held company in building materials is just have the attitude of you're playing to win, where your competition or the your publicly traded competition, is playing not to lose rather than to win. 
There are many other examples here of things where the publicly traded company, their hands are tied. It isn't that they aren't really smart people, but because they've decided to become publicly traded, they've give up a bit of control and they are now having to meet the short-term expectations of Wall Street versus the longer-term expectations of the customer. And that is a real opportunity for a privately held company to be able to literally in today's world run circles around larger publicly traded competitors. So I hope I've given you something to to think about and perhaps a new way of looking at some of your larger publicly traded competitors who because many times of their size can seem rather daunting and a tough competitor but they really are if you step back and look at them from a different light they really have many areas Achilles heels if you will that you can as a privately held company that you can take advantage of so i hope i've given you some good things to think about if you found this to be of value please uh, please pass it along to uh, other people you think would benefit from it and uh, suggest that they sign up for my uh, weekly newsletter. So until next time, go sell something. Thank you for listening to this podcast from Mark Mitchell on building materials, sales and marketing. We hope he gave you some fresh perspectives on how to grow your sales and will listen to future episodes. 